and welcome to another edition of Small Nation Shorts. And it's nearly April. In fact, by the time you're watching this, it will be April, which is an amazing month. And you might be wondering why I'm holding all these things in my hand. Well, I have got a few things that I might need during April this year. I've got a palm cross, a palm leaf, and a big, big Easter egg full of little Easter eggs. That's right. April will see us celebrating Easter. And for Christians, that's a really important time of the year. It isn't just about the Easter eggs, although they are very delicious. It's about remembering what Jesus did for us. And that's why this one is the most important symbol that I am gonna be looking at this Easter. It's the symbol of the cross. And today's Small Nations is just going to explore what Easter means and help us to remember what Jesus has done for us. And so then we can say a great big thank you. But before we start, I am going to pray. And then we're going to sing a song together that reminds us that God has done great things. And this is one of the greatest things that we're going to be remembering this session. Father God, we thank you that it's nearly April. Thank you that it's the time of year that everything comes to life where all the flowers and the plants start to grow. The sun starts to shine. And we can remember that we all have new life through what you did for us on the cross. Help us now as we reflect on what Easter really means. And as we worship you, help us remember that you really do great things. Amen.
fantastic. Oh, I love that song. I love thinking about the great things that God has done for us. And I've got a bit of a game for us because there are some amazing places in the world and I believe that God created some amazing places. But there are also some amazing places in the world that actually we've created as humans. So I've got a bit of a game for you and it's called Where Am I? So in a minute, some pictures are going to come up on the screen and we've hidden the landmark behind an Easter egg. And I want you to know to see whether you can tell me the name of the landmark. That's one point. If you can tell me the city that it's in, that's another point. And if you can tell me the country that it's in, that's three points. So you can get up to three points. And there are, let me just check, there are seven. So that's a whole 21 points up for grabs here. So I'm wondering how good your score is gonna be. Are you ready? Get a piece of paper and a pen. We'll do it one at a time and then you can start totaling up your score as you go along. So, first picture. Okay, so what can you see? Looks somewhere really sunny, really nice. Can you get any clues? A lot of sand. Can I give you another second? Okay, let's take it away. Aha, it is the Great Pyramids of Giza. That's where they are in Egypt. So if you manage to get pyramids, Giza, Egypt, you've got yourself three points. Fantastic, well done. Okay, right, next one. This one's a little bit closer to home. Hopefully it should be quite good. Here we go. There's the picture. Ooh, do you recognize it? Do you recognize it? Do you know where we are? Ooh, okay, another second or so. Okay, let's reveal. It is the London Eye, which is in London, helpfully, and that's in the UK. If you're in England, that's fine too, but up to three points is up for grabs there as well. Fantastic. I wonder how many of you have been to the London Eye? I have, a long time ago, and it was amazing. The views were fantastic. Okay, let's go for number three. All right, there we are. What can you see? Oh, interesting. Okay, so obviously a bit of green space here, but something very, very tall. It's quite close to us, this one, but not in our country. Okay, let's see if you've got it. Reveal, oh, there we go. It is the Eiffel Tower, which is in, I can hear you all shouting, Paris, which is in the country of France. So Eiffel Tower, Paris, France, three points for you. Fantastic, okay, right, so let's go with our next one. Okay, let's have a look at it. Can you see behind the Easter egg, what is the building? This one's actually is quite hard to hide, to be fair. So I'm hoping you're gonna get it. I wonder if you've ever been. Another European country, there's a bit of a clue. Okay, reveal, lovely. Right, we have got the Colosseum, which is in Rome, which is in Italy. Amazing, an amazing place that's been visited for a very long time. Okay, let's do our next one. Again, a bit closer to home, this one. Okay, can you see, you're getting a bit of an idea? Can you see behind those, what do you think might be behind the Easter egg? Again, this one was quite hard to hide. Okay, let's reveal it. Yes, it is Stonehenge. And I wonder whether you know that it's in Wiltshire on the Salisbury Plain, in fact, in the UK. So I wonder whether you will have got your three marks there. It'd be interesting to know if you had. Okay, let's go for the next one. Two more to go. Okay, so next one. Let's, let's show you it. Uh, does anyone recognise it? I'd be interested to know if anyone's been here. I have never been here. Okay, but I would love to go. It's just a long plane ride to get to this place. So let's reveal. Yep, it is the Sydney Opera House. Handy hint, it is in Sydney and it is in Australia. Fantastic, well done. That's three points there as well if you got that one. So the last one, now this one is tricky and it'll be really interesting if anybody's got any ideas. And this one, I'll give you a clue, will link us into what we're talking about this session. So let's show it and let's see if you can have a think as to what you think it might be. Mm, I can see some greenery, some rocks. Okay, if you can read the bit on the side, you might be able to have a clue. Let's reveal it. Yeah, it's still not very clear, is it? Well, actually, this is a place found in Jerusalem, which is in the country of Israel. And this is the place where they think, although no one can be 100% sure, that the tomb where Jesus was, was, was buried is. Okay, or at least a place where it might have been. So this is a very special place where Christians can travel to Jerusalem and they can see this place and think, well, this must have been, this might have been the place where Jesus rose again on that third day. Fantastic. I wonder how many points out of 21 you got. Brilliant. Even if you just got all the landmarks right, that's pretty amazing. Let me know. Send me a little message. Let me know on Sunday when you see me, your score. And I'm really looking forward to finding out how you got on. Okay, before we move on and do another song, I want to know you to think about what might be happening in April, because one of the things that we do with Small Nation Shorts is we let you know what's happening at church, let you know what's happening for you guys. So 
On the 10th of April, we've got a fantastic service at church. It's our baptism service, and a couple of our kids are getting baptised, and we're so excited to see that. So please come along to support them, and we'll be teaching you a little bit about what it means to be baptised, and what it actually, and the children that are being baptised will be talking to you about it well, as well, so you can see why they've made this step. The following weekend is Easter weekend and we are doing something fantastic on Good Friday. We are going to Russell Farm which is really close to our church, about 15 minutes away and we are going to wander around the forest, we're going to do a little bit of a trail, we're going to have some uh, exciting activities to do, we're going to have a little service in the big barn with the rest of our church family and we're just going to enjoy ourselves. We are hoping that the weather is going to be brilliant, the sun is going to shine, there's loads and loads of places for you guys to play, there's a massive field where we can run some games, we can all have lunch together, it's going to be fantastic. So if your mum and dad haven't already signed you guys up, Please, 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 bug them, bug them, bug them so that they sign you up. It's welcome for everybody. Grannies, granddads, dogs, mums, dads, children, anybody, aunties, uncles, anyone that wants to come can come along to Russell Farm at half past ten. There's more information about that and a place to sign up on our website. And then on Easter Sunday, we'll be together again at church. We can't wait. And on Easter Sunday, there'll be lots and lots and lots of little Sunday Easter treats for you guys to enjoy in your groups and also being together as a church. And then before you know it, it will probably be the end of April and we'll be wondering what's happening in May, but you can look out for our next session of Small Nations. We know you guys are about to have our Easter holiday, pretty sure that you can't wait for that. And we are really looking forward to you coming and joining us at church as well. Right, that's enough of me talking. Let's now sing another song. This song is all about what Jesus did for us. It's called This Is Amazing Grace. It's one we've been singing with you guys a lot. So it's all about what Jesus has done for us and then we're going to find out a little bit more about that Easter story. Enjoy!
Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy. the Easter story and I'm going to use one piece of paper to do it I'm quite excited about that um, and also there'll be some pictures that go up on the screen just to kind of help you to really visualize what was happening to Jesus and we're focusing in on the week leading up to that day when he died on the cross now some of you might remember that right at the beginning of the uh, the week Jesus came into Jerusalem and everybody was waving their palm branches at him like this Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. They believed that he was the king and he was going to go into Jerusalem and he was going to go and stand up to the Romans. They were pretty excited about this idea of somebody, even if he was going on, riding on a donkey, that he might be somebody that would go in and would get rid of the Romans because that's really what they wanted. But you know, that wasn't what Jesus planned to do. In fact, what he decided to do with his disciples was that he actually went to the temple. There we are. And at the temple, he also didn't do what they expect him to do there either. In fact, he was so cross when he went to the temple and he saw how they were charging people lots of money and they were not being very truthful to people that he turned the tables over and he called it a den of thieves. Now at this point, I think the people were a little bit concerned that maybe this wasn't the king or the type of king that they were expecting. In fact, what him and his disciples decided to do was they decided to go to a house. And they went to this house and they climbed all the way up here, up into an upper room. And in that upper room, that's where Jesus washed his disciples' feet to show them that he was actually a servant king. And where he ate the last supper with his disciples. He had the Passover, which was a Jewish festival. He celebrated it with them. He had the wine and he had the bread and he spoke to them about what was going to happen to him. And that's why we celebrate communion because that's what Jesus did with his disciples. Now it must have been a very confusing time for the disciples because they too had expected a king who was going to ride in on a horse and fight and get rid of the Romans. And then they realized that he wasn't going to do that. In fact, he was talking to them about how he was going to die I think I'd have been a little bit confused. In fact, the next thing that they did was he went into the garden and he sat and he knelt and he prayed and he prayed to God. The disciples, they fell asleep. They were really tired, but Jesus didn't fall asleep. Jesus prayed to God and Jesus said to God, if there's any chance I don't have to do this, that would be great, but I will do it because I know it's what you want me to. While they were in the garden, some guards came to arrest him and they took him away. And what they did was they really mistreated him. They took him on lots and lots and lots of different trials and they made him, they made him wear a robe. They put a crown on his thorns, a thorns on his head. They whipped him, they hurt him, they spat on him. They did absolutely everything that they could to humiliate him. And then ultimately, the thing that they did then was they killed him. He died 
on a cross. Now that was, at the time, the worst way to die. It was the Roman way to die. And it was the worst way to die. And not only did he die on the cross, but actually he had people guarding him with their spears. Had guards at the bottom to make sure that nobody got any clo got close to him. In fact, at one point, they were even, the guards even started to play a game of dice and rolling a dice. The next person that rolls a double six, they can have Jesus' cloak. They laughed at him, they jeered at him, and they watched him die. When he died, some of his disciples came to the Romans and asked if they could take him, take his body, to bury it. And that's what they did. They carried his body really carefully to a tomb. A bit like that picture that we saw where people think that his tomb might be. It was the tomb of a man called Joseph and he gave up his burial tomb so that Jesus could be in it. And there we are, they popped him in a tomb. That, sat that was Friday. That Saturday must have been terrible. The worst Saturday those disciples had ever felt. Their friend had gone. The one they thought was going to come and save them had died. What on earth were they going to do? On the Sunday morning, some of Jesus' friends got up really early and they went to the tomb and I think they probably decided that they were going to see what they could do to maybe give him a better burial than he had had quite quickly on the Friday. What was amazing was when they got to the tomb, it was empty. There was nobody there. Mary, one of the people, one of the women that went to see him, was one looking around the garden thinking, where is he? Who's taken his body? This is ridiculous. She saw a gardener. She ran over and said, what is going on? Who has moved him? It was only when that gardener turned to her and said, Mary, that she realized it was Jesus. He wasn't dead. He was alive. That was amazing. That showed that he wasn't just any old man. He was God, because only God can come alive again. Well, Jesus told Mary to go and tell the others, and that's what she did. She ran off and she met the other disciples who ran back, and there was all sorts of toing and froing on that Sunday morning. And eventually, over the course of the next couple of days, they all met with Jesus. And then, when Jesus had returned to heaven, the disciples all started to tell people about what Jesus had done for them. And that's what we read in the Bible. Some people didn't believe them at first, but lots of people did. And that's how the story of Jesus has spread from a little country of Israel right the way across the world, right the way to us today. Now, I don't know whether you know much about Jesus or what Jesus has done for you, but I can tell you right now that he died on that cross just for you and me and everyone else in the world. You see, he wanted to make sure that we could be friends with God. And we've all done things that are really, really wrong. All of us. It doesn't matter who we are. Nobody's perfect. And we can't be with God because God's so holy and so amazing and God is perfect. But because Jesus died on the cross and he, even though he was innocent, he took all of our sin and he paid the price for it. Now we can be friends with God. And when we die, we can go to heaven and be with him. That to me is worth celebrating. That is even better than all the chocolate eggs in the world. That's the most amazing thing about Easter that even if I had been the only person on the earth, Jesus still would have died for me because he thinks that much about me. You might have heard something this morning that's made you have a few questions. You might be thinking, did Jesus really die for me? What does that mean? Talk to somebody, talk to a grown up in your house or come and find me on Sunday morning and come and have, we can have a little chat about what Jesus has done for you. I'm gonna pray and then we're gonna sing a song. And this song is called sign your cross and it's all about singing about God's love for us and the fact that he died for us and saying it over ourselves because it is about what God has done for us. Father God we thank you that you died on the cross. We thank you that you love us so much that you sent your son. In John 3:16, it says for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not die but have eternal life. And thank you that that is the message for us today. 
Thank you that you died for us. Thank you that you rose again and that we can live with you forever. Amen. So as you go into the Easter weekend, enjoy the chocolates, enjoy the egg hunts, but remember the most important part. God loves you and Jesus died for you. And he came alive again to prove he was God and to show the world that he loves us so much. Let's sing this song and we'll see you next time on Small Nation Shorts.
can't wait to see what you've done. And I pray. And I pray. 